Start it with some math facts. I put them down here for this night. Something great. All right, sorry. Okay, all right, fine facts. Let's go over our math facts. So we'll start with our doubles plus one facts. Okay, so three plus four equals seven, seven, seven. Four plus five equals nine, nine, nine. Five plus six equals 11, 11, 11. Six plus seven equals 13, 13, 13. Seven plus eight equals 15, 15, 15. A plus nine equals 17, 17, 17. Okay. All right. So remember, um, we did the twins of these facts that we just went over. Remember, they're the same exact thing, except they're just, you know, the opposite, but they're called twins. So I have three plus four is seven. So four plus three would be seven. same exact facts. Then I have five plus four plus five is nine. So five plus four is nine. Same facts. Okay. I have five plus six is eleven. So six plus five is eleven. Same facts. I have six plus seven is thirteen. So seven plus six is thirteen. Thirteen. 7 plus 8 is 15. 8 plus 7 is 15. 15. I have 8 plus 9 is 17. 9 plus 8 is 17. Good. So just don't forget that. It's the same exact fact. It's just the twin. Okay. Let's go over some subtraction. So... 8 minus 1 equals 7. 7, 7, 7. 6, 6 minus 0 equals 6, 6, 6. 5, Five minus 1 equals 4, 4, 4. 9 minus 1 equals 8, 8, 8. 2 minus 0 equals 2, 2, 2. Five 4. Minus one equals three, three, three. Ten minus one equals nine, nine, nine. Y minus one equals zero, zero, zero. Six minus one equals five, five, five. Nine minus zero equals nine, nine, nine. Eight minus zero equals eight, eight, eight. Three minus zero equals three, three, three. Good. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> All right, let's go over some number patterns on the board. <laughs> All right, so I'm counting by twos up here. I have 14, 16, 18. Where would I go from there? 14, 16, 18, 20. 20. Keep going. 
30. 30. Good. Remember, counting by twos, the number pattern is 24680. So if you remember that, it'll be easy. So let's start with two and let's go all the way to 30. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. Good. Okay, let's count by five. So I have 65, 70, 75, 80, 80, 80 85, 85, 90, 90, 95, 100. 100. 100. Awesome. So let's count by five to 100. Start with five. Five. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Okay. And our last one, we're counting by tens. But remember, anytime we go past 100, the pattern stays the same. Okay. It does not change when you're counting by tens, except now you'll say 100 and. So I have 90, 100, 100 and counting by tens. Again, 100 and 10, 100 and 20, 100 and 30, 100 and 40, 100 and 50, 100 and 60. Good. Let's count by tens to 160. 10, 20, 30, 40. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, Okay, so that is something we will start to see in our book, this word here, which is called congruent. Whenever we talk about the word congruent, it is used to compare shapes to one another. So we use the word congruent to compare shapes. So whenever I say that a shape is congruent, what I mean is that it's the same shape, number one, and it's the same size. Whenever you say that something is congruent, you're saying that it's the same shape and the same size. Congruent means same shape, same size. Again, congruent means that it's the same shape and it's the same size. Again, congruent means that it's the same shape and the same size. So look at my shapes here. I have one, two, three, four, and five. Which ones do you think are congruent to one another? Which shapes are congruent? Meaning it's the same shape, same size. Which shapes are congruent? The two triangles. The two triangles, yes. Number one and number three are congruent to one another. They're the same size and they're the same shape. Which other shapes are congruent to one another? Same size, same shape. What you got, babe? Uh, the circles. The circles, two and five. Number two and number five are also congruent to one another because they are the same shape, a circle, and they're the same size. Now, could four be congruent with anything? No. No. Because although four is a shape, it's a square, there's no other shape that's the same size as a square or the same exact shape. So that means four is not congruent to anything. But what about the triangle? Could it be congruent to the square? No, no it cannot be congruent to the square, right? The triangle in itself is a whole different shape. So that right there tells us that it's not. But sometimes they could be the same shape. Like say if I got this circle here, then I have this circle here. Is that congruent? No. No, it is the same shape. Yes, 
but it's not, but the, it's not same the same size. size. So in order for a shape to be congruent, it has to have both. It has to be both the same size and the same shape. If it's missing one or the other, then it cannot be congruent. So you will see that on your in your book where it will ask you about congruent. And congruent means that it's the same size and the same shape. Same size, same, same shape. shape. That's what congruent means. Okay. All right, let's see. <clears throat> All right. All right, so congruent, same size, same shape, okay? So I'm going to draw, I'm sorry, I want you with a loose leaf paper, I'm gonna give you something. If you have a loose leaf paper ready and a pencil, I'll give you a few seconds to get that. All right, so I want you to draw two shapes that are congruent to one another, your own two shapes that are congruent. So we just talked about what congruent means. It's the same shape and the same size. So what are two shapes that you draw and then show me two shapes that are congruent to one another? Okay, everybody, good. I see yours. Okay, good. Faith, see yours. Okay, two hearts, good. Okay, good. I judge two circles. Okay, okay, good. Let me see, take left. A little closer for me. Okay. Okay, good. So in order for a shape to be congruent, it has to be the same size, same shape. Good, okay? So that's our new thing we're learning. Everything else is kind of revealed. We knew that already. But this was our newer thing. So congruent. So you will see it in your book on today in your workbook page. It's lesson worksheet 83. So just make sure you know, oh, I know what congruent means. That means shapes that are the same size and the same shape. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's it for math. You still need that paper. Um, <clears throat> you still need that paper. Let's go ahead and move on to writing. Now we're going to combine our writing and language lesson today. So it'll kind of be like together, but it's, you know just to kind of prep for the test. So remember in language, we've been learning the four types of sentences. We have four different kinds of sentences. And about it remembers, let's see, what is one type of sentence we learned? Question. A question sentence. Okay, what else? Exclamation. An exclamation sentence, that's our new one. So we learned statements. No, sorry, I just gave one. We learned questions. Exclamation. Okay, Taylor, you have a type of sentence? Command. A command. Oh. That wasn't her. You have to unmute. Oh, I have statement. A statement, yes, good. And then Dennis has said command. Good. So, yes, yeah, so we have statements. We have questions, we have commands, and we have exclamation sentences. These are our four types of sentences, okay? So we've learned all four of them. Remember, all of our sentences start with the capital letter, 
Which ones end with periods? Which two end with a period? Um, phrase. That's not the sentence. A statement, a statement and, and a, command. a command. A statement and a command end with periods. But question and exclamation sentences end a little differently. How do they end? How does a, a question sentence end with a what? Question. question mark and then how does an exclamation sentence end it ends with the what exclamation. an exclamation mark so that's important to remember when you're writing your own when you're identifying them it's pretty obvious because you'll know like oh well look what at the end but when you're writing your own type of sentence it's important to know what goes at the end to put the right thing at the end okay so let's start with number one so we're creating our own sentences today so number one, I want you to create a statement sentence with the word December in there, okay? So write your own sentence, a statement with the word December in it. So it can be about December, whatever. Okay, I'll give you a minute to do that. Christmas is in, Christmas is in December, good. All right, what you have? December, me and my cousin will have a sleepover. In December, me and my cousin will have a sleepover. Good, Faith. Say, and mom is going to the water park in December. Faith and mom are going to the water park in December. Good. You have yours, Carson? No? Okay. Uh, Bye, you have a sentence? Yeah. You do or no? You're, you're on mute. I don't know if you're saying anything, but it's on mute. I'm saying things. Huh? I just said my sentence, but I'm still on mute. I okay. went to Chili's in December. I went to Chili's in December, okay? Okay, Dennis, you have your statement, you have your senses, number one. In December, the weather gets cold. Yes, in December, the weather gets cold, okay? Okay, Taylor, you still have, you have it or are you still working on it? December. I forgot what this word is. You said December. I forgot what this is. Calm. Calm. Say the word. <laughs> mm -hmm. I went to the store with Anya and Elsa. Good. Okay. In December, Tom went to the store with Anna and you said Elsa? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. All right, number two. Oh, you have it? Okay. Okay, in December, I went to the mall. Good. All right, number two. Let's write a question sentence with the word Tuesday. That's a challenge. Can you create a question sentence? So that means you're asking something with the word Tuesday. Can you go to the park with me on Tuesday? Can you go to the park with me on Tuesday? Good. <coughs> okay. Uh, right. Are you coming to school on Tuesday? Are you coming to school on Tuesday? Good. Okay. Can I go to school on Tuesday? Can I go to school on Tuesday? Good. Anybody else have one before we go to number three? A question sentence with Tuesday. Do 
on Tuesday. Okay, do you want to come to Arizona with me on Tuesday? Good. I have okay, a Avaya. Could you come to my house on Tuesday? Okay, good. Could you come to my house on Tuesday? Okay, good. Anybody else? No? Yeah, yeah. Can you go to the park? Can I go to the park on Tuesday? Good. Can I go to the park on Tuesday? Good. Taylor, you have one? Can I go to the school on Tuesday? Can I go to the store on Tuesday? Okay. Awesome. Y'all like to go places, huh? Okay. All right, cool. Number three, could you write a command sentence? Any kind of command sentence? Maybe a command sentence that your parents will tell you. Okay. Okay, give me some commands. Okay. Go on the couch. Go on the couch. Okay, Taylor. Um, please go to the store. Wait, please go wait, to the I'm store. Doing. Good, Tom. all right. Listen oh, Tom. Tom. Listen to your teacher. Good, listen to your teacher. Do the dishes. Do the dishes. Go to your room. Go to your room. Okay, anybody else? I have my question. Okay, come in. Clean your room. Clean your room. Good. Okay, Dennis, you have yours? Still working, no. Do your work. Do your work. Okay, good. All right. And the last one, number four. Give me an exclamation sentence. An exclamation. Now remember, these sentences usually have to show emotion. So you're usually excited about something, scared, maybe, or angry. A lot of emotion. So you can't just say, I like to play and call that an exclamation. No, it has to be something that you actually would have a lot of emotion saying. That's why it's called an exclamation sentence. So try that one. Miss Ludic. Uh huh. I already did mine. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Hey, mom, before you go. All right, let's hear some exclamation sentences. Okay, go ahead, Avaya. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're on mute? You, mute? you muted me. It's fine. You can just go ahead and read it. Thank we you. We won the game. We won the game. Good, Araya. It's my okay. birthday. It's my birthday, okay? Oh, somebody else, but we won the game, okay? I am mad at you, okay? Ouch, that hurt. Ouch, that hurt. That's an interjection. It's my birthday. Okay, it's my birthday. Taylor, you have one? I have... Hey, oh, mama, what is this you're the one who wrote it. What you put? Let me hey. see. Hey, you at the bottom, the last one. You said, I'm having fun. That's what you said. I, uh, I'm having, having fun. Wait, wait, I'm having, wait, Take I'm them. having, <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. I have a fun. Good. I'm having fun. Good. Okay, so good. Awesome job, guys, of writing your sentences. So that means we'll have A's on both of our tests tomorrow, right? Wait, yeah. What yep. <gasps> writing and language. <coughs> And so, yeah, so that means we'll have A's. I like A's. Okay. Awesome. All right. Yep, yeah, we should. We should. Some people don't like A's, but we do. All right, so let's go ahead and go over your science and social studies, and we're going to be done. What? Yeah. We don't have to read Wait. Oh, and reading. Sorry, I forgot we have reading. Yeah, because they reminded me. Yeah, I'm just I'm just showing you pictures today for science and social studies. It's not uh like so a full lesson. Yesterday we did the lessons. All right, so remember we visited two national parks this week. We visited the Rocky Mountain National Park, which is located in Colorado. So the Rocky Mountains are known for the very high mountains, very beautiful mountains that they are. So you need to tell me I'm going to sit and do nothing? There's a ton of things you could be doing. 
Yes, so sorry. So yes, the Rocky Mountain National Park is in Colorado. It's known for the really high mountains. So we talked about how there at the Rocky Mountain National Park, one thing that's cool is that there's a sheep, I mean, uh, yeah, a type of sheep there that only lives in the Rocky Mountains and it's called big horn sheep, okay? And I told you it's really cool because the way that their feet are is specifically made for where they live, which is inside of the mountains. So let's look at a couple of pictures. So this is actually the sign. If you go to Rocky Mountain National Park, you can see the sign here. So you see, it's been here since 1950. Now the mountains were here a long time ago, but I'm saying the park was uh, formed in 1915. So that's over a hundred years old. Yeah. So here's a beautiful picture of the mountains. Look at that. Really beautiful mountains. You can hike, you can find them. Um, yeah. And so if you look here in this area, that's actually trees. Yeah. So that means the mountains are super high. Look how much higher they are than those trees. Okay. There's another beautiful picture here. There's like a little lake here. With a person. And so, yeah, <laughs> the person. So as you can see, this was during a time where it snowed um, because you can still see the snow. But some of the mountains actually have snow on top of it year round because that's how high up they are in the air. So remember the Rocky Mountains extends from Canada to Mexico. So they're really a really long mountain range. The park is just in Colorado um, and it extends like 3000 miles long. So it's a really long mountain range. There's another beautiful picture. Look the at that. Water. And that water is so pretty. Yeah, yeah it's including mm -hmm. That's where you told us in like a in Arizona where um the the rocks change colors. Well, yeah, that's the Grand Canyon. That's where we're going next. Yeah. This one is it seems like the sun, it looks like it's rising. So that's why it looks like how it um it looks like that but this is the rocky mountains the national rocky mountain national park so after we left colorado we went to arizona where we visited the grand canyon national park now i told you the grand the, the grand canyon is a little different think about it as if there's a mountain that you flip upside down that's what a canyon is it goes deep in the ground so the cool thing about the grand canyon is that you can stand and look down over it you know uh, where mountains, we usually have to look up to see the mountain, but with the canyon, we look down and the canyon goes in the ground, okay? So the Grand Canyon is very beautiful. Have a picture inside of it. Huh? Do you have a picture inside? Yeah, this is what it is here. Yeah, so this is in Arizona, so here's a beautiful picture. So you see how you can look down in it? So you usually, mo you can go down at the bottom, but most of the time when you get there, you'll be standing up at the top up here and you'll be able to look down in the canyon. So remember I told you the Colorado River, that's this river down here, that's what flows through the Grand Canyon. You could actually take a boat ride on the Colorado kind of riding through the Grand Canyon and seeing more of it. So here, do you see how the cut rocks look like orange and red and a little bit brown? That's how, they, that's how the colors kind of change when the sun touches the rocks. Sometimes the colors kind of change. Um, now, it's not actually those different colors. It's just the reflection of the sun on the rocks. And that's what it looks like. So it's really beautiful. And they call it the colorful canyon. I'm going to go there next time I go to my dad. Yeah. OK, so remember I told you there's two types of animals that live in the Grand Canyon that aren't anywhere else. Of course, they have regular animals like deer, elk, you know, things like that. But they also have, remember the white-tailed squirrel? Mm -hmm. Look at his tail, it's white. Most of the squirrels we usually see have like a brown tail, but Ooh. this one has a white tail. This is a white-tailed squirrel. And then the pink rattlesnake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So remember they also have the pink rattlesnake that lives in the Grand Canyon as well. These two animals aren't anywhere else. You won't find them I mean, if you see them somewhere, it's probably because they took them from there. But you will find those two animals in the Grand Canyon, the pink rattlesnake and the white-tailed squirrel, okay? So that's our two places we visited, the Grand Canyon and, <clears throat> excuse me, the Grand Canyon and 
the Rocky Mountain National Park. Okay, so just make sure to review your pages and everything uh, to be prepared for the test on Friday. So in science, we learned about our next animal, which is a duck, right? We know that ducks live near ponds. Ducks are cool because they live both inland, but they also are really good in the water as well. And because of that, God designed the duck, you know, special. So the first thing we talked about was the oil sac that ducks have. The oil sac helps the duck, but uh, helps the duck stay waterproof. Remember I told you oil and water don't mix. So because of that oil sac, the oil covers the feathers of the duck. And when water goes on the duck, guess what the water does? Go. Slides right off because the oil sac allows the duck to be waterproof. The water will slide right off of the oil that's on his back. So that's why they're able to go in the water and they're not so heavy from all the water because the water is literally just sliding off of them. So we talked about a duck's feet. They're webbed, which are great to help him swim fast if he has to like run away or just if he wants to swim in the water. He has his webbed feet that he uses to paddle and to swim. We talked about I also his feet, they're good to walk on land as well. So you see, I told you they're made, they can live in water, but they can live on land as well. Now they usually sleep on land. They really just, you know, go in the water to swim and things like that. So they do have feathers, meaning they have wings where they can fly, but ducks aren't like, they don't fly like birds. You know how birds fly like all the time? They just fly like if they need to like get somewhere high or to run away, things like that. So after we uh, talked about their web feet, we discussed how they have a long bill. And on the edges of their bill, they have tiny teeth. Those tiny teeth help to keep food in because they dig, they dig and grab their food out of the ground. They eat worms and um, insects. Like that's the different things that ducks eat. And to hold those things in their mouth, they have those tiny teeth that kind of track those things in. And that's how they eat. So ducks are really cool. So that's the different things we discussed when it comes to ducks, like how they are designed, how they're made. There's different types of ducks. You have some ducks that are one color, some ducks that are different colors, but they're all unique and all beautiful. And ducks also hatch. They're animals that hatch. So their mom will lay eggs, the babies will hatch. And remember the baby ducklings will follow their mom until they're old enough to kind of go ahead and go on their own, okay? So that was our science lesson this week on ducks. And so everything we talked about, that's the questions that will be on the test. All right, let's go ahead and go to reading. That'll be our last lesson for today. So we read about Kim and Tim and how they got their gift, the last gift, which they were excited about. Let's go to 82 on the farm. Huh? Which page? No. Uh, 82. So you mean to tell me? All right, so we're on page 82 on the farm. We're going to read about Steve and Jean. Okay, I'm, I'm going to let you read, y'all. It's, it's going to be okay. Oh, damn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
All right, let's go ahead and get started. <coughs> wow. I'm, on, I'm not on that page. Okay. 82. Yeah. So. All right. Okay. 82. Come on, Kenley. On the farm. He and she live on a farm in the West. They like to play in the steam hay. Sometimes they run right in the brook. Wade. In the pool. Okay, keep going. Steve and Jean will work hard to help out on the farm. Good. Okay. So we're introduced to Steve and Jean, and where do they live? On a farm. On a farm. What do they like to play in? No, no, no. Hey. Hey, and they like to wade, which is swim in the brook. Okay. So they help out on the farm. Let's keep reading on 83. Okay. Oh my gosh. Steve and Jean work hard to help out mm -hmm. on the farm. And Steve mm -hmm. helps mother cook and clean. She likes to help they both father milk the cows. He has a big farm dog, sheep, Steve, mm -hmm. and sheep take the cows to where the grass is green and long. Okay. So Jean likes to help. Who does she help? Who does Jean help? Jean help. Father mother, cook. she helps mother do what? Cook. And she helps father milk. The cow. Okay, what does Steve do? Steve helps with the cows. He also helps with the cows, right? But he also takes care of the what? The dog. Oh. Good. Okay, 84. Four. Okay, come on. If a cow gets off. If a cow gets off. The path he has to bring it back on. And did you do your other ones that you missed? From one sixty one. A long, a long way. At no He goes out to in they. Both walk back to the house for lunch. Oh. He gets a tail oh. tall grass of cool milk. Milk. <coughs> tastes good to for he works hard with those cows. Mm -hmm. Steve and Jean take 
Thank God for the meal. Jean, thank God for all tell stories, brother. Jean, thank him that he can work hard and be a help. Okay, good. All right, so Steve, he has a big job. If a cow goes off the path, meaning the cow kind of goes, you know, out, what does he have to do? Get it and bring it back, right? And so what happens at noontime? What do they go and do? They get ready for lunch. And Steve has his milk, glass of milk. You know, they thank God for their meal, okay? So 85, they both thank God for a good home on the farm. Good. All right, let's look at 86. So Steve and Jean live on the farm and they do a lot of hard work on the farm. Okay, anybody want to read the words on 86? Me. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Avaya. Spark, scratch. Uh, A R R. Part, mm -hmm. Lark, Wall, West, Chart, King, King, is that the word? King, I N K, ink, yeah. King. Car. Cray. Ah, A R R. Car. Car. Room. Wash. Star. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, and the words on the bottom. Hang. Farm. Blank. Charm, bring, walk, swimming, talk, stalk, high, good, night, wood. Okay, good. All right. And then 87. So we have WA that says wa, like in wash. Okay. All right. Come on, down. Come on, where are you going? Okay. Honestly, the words. One, when, well, when. Wander, and uh, you can read the sentence. Do the first two. I must wash my hands and then I may eat. My dog wags his tail to show that he likes me. Okay, good. All right, and three and four, come on. Do not watch this for three. Uh, what can seem like a V? Good. Are we going to do eighty eight? No, that was it. All right, good. So that's it for 87. All right, good. So guys, that was our last lesson for today. So just make sure you complete all your workbook pages and everything um, that you have to do with that. Okay, so that's it for us. So tomorrow we'll meet for our phonics uh, test and our, <clears throat> our uh, spelling. spelling Friday. Okay, um, Taylor, um, let your mom know I have your phonics test booklet. I didn't, I must, I'm gonna have to send a copy of that with the thing that I need to send again too. Okay.
So yeah, I'm gonna send a copy of it. All right, guys, y'all have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye, Taylor. Everybody's telling you bye, Taylor. <laughs> bye.